the title of today's webinar is Accelerating Sustainable Mobility with Future Generations. Um, we'll make a slow start now as people are still joining. Um, we expect to run on until about 12.30, but we'll do our best to uh, stick on time for you today. Next slide, please. So in a few moments time, we'll be having an icebreaker um, using Slido. So in the meantime, before we start that, if you would like to go to slido.com and uh, enter hashtag 41213866 or use the uh, QR code on screen, then we'll be uh, ready to begin that icebreaker when we get to that point. In the meantime, I'll just present the agenda to you briefly. It's divided into three main sections of roughly half an hour each. I'm here to give you a brief in introduction and we'll also give you an overview of the Shared Green Deal project, both how the project sits as an overall entity and also a bit more detail on the mobility aspect of the project, which we're here to talk about today. Um, the second part, is on the substance of what's been going on within schools and education context within the project. So we're going to give an overview of three mobility stream experiments and have a deeper dive and discussion into the example from Lithuania. And thirdly, uh, we've got some space for you to um, open up your mics and discuss your inputs, perhaps even give a critique of the practices that we've been trying and, and to ask any further questions that you've got um, of our speakers today. Next slide, please. So by the end of the webinar today, we think you should have come away with three um, learning points. So have an understanding of the Shared Green Deal project, the local experiments and its outcomes having learned some new processes and practices to engage children in pl planning sustainable ways to school and have thought through some replication strategies that really promote real change uh, and go more than just uh, superficial tokenistic ways of implementing sustainable mobility in schools. Next slide, please. So here are your speakers for today. I'm Reggie Tricker. I work for Eclay Europe, uh, based here in Freiburg, and I'm joined uh, today by my colleague Eliane, who will be helping to present the case studies from the project. Um, we'll also be joined by Lucas from the University of Technology in Vienna, who's the uh, research lead for the mobility stream in the project, and Ivan uh, from MRI in Hungary, who is uh, supporting us with uh, the re research aspects of the project as well. Uh, importantly, we've got a local partner on board that's actually been implementing or overseeing the implementation of these measures, um, Lena from Lithuania, and she will introduce herself further in due course. Next slide, please. So just some basics about the meeting today. Um, we're recording the meeting so people that can't join today um, are able to uh, hear the webinar afterwards. So please remain muted for the clarity of the message for everybody that's on the call today. We'll be using a couple of the buttons at the bottom of the screen. So we'd encourage you to use the question and answer Q&A button to pose questions for a specific response. And if you go to the questions as they've been asked, there's also a kind of a, a thumbs up hand, uh, thumbs up um, like button. So if there's any particular questions that you're interested in supporting being answered, um, if you give it a thumbs up, then it's maybe more likely that we'll get to that during the Q&A discussion. Of course, you can also use the chat if you want to generally discuss aspects with uh, other people on the call or you have any issues about your participation in the call, um, but please, try and use the Q&A so it's a bit clearer uh, where you want a specific question to be answered. And I think that's it for the, for the housekeeping instructions. Um, just very briefly about the Shared Green Deal project. It's a five year um, project, so it's quite long. And having started in 2022, you can see we're getting on for halfway through already. Um, my colleague Lucas will explain a bit more in, in terms of how it relates to social sciences, um, but just to say that is an emphasis within the project and we're one of uh, a number of different domains we've, in mobility that is um, testing out the application of these concepts to um, solutions in sustainability. We're working closely with local authorities in 
authorities and NGOs on the ground, uh, because these are the people that are at the forefront of actually delivering these high level ambitions to uh, reduce uh, dangerous climate change. And uh, although we're kind of halfway through and we're presenting where we've got to, um, there's still a little bit of work to be good done and, and case study guides will be published in the autumn. So this is a really useful point for you to all input into those final recommendations at this stage in the project. Next slide, please. So I'm going to hand over now um, to my colleague, Javier, in due course, but just to emphasize here that if you want to join three short questions, just to find out a bit more about who you are and uh, some interesting facts to get things going, uh, go to slido.com, hashtag is 4121386. Uh, I think is also in the chat for those of you uh, who haven't already accessed it and there's a QR code um, on screen. So I will okay. hand over to my colleague. Thank you, Reggie. Okay, I will now stop sharing and we will go to the Slido. One moment, please. Can you see the screen now? Okay. Okay, so we will start with the first question. I see that some of you already responded the the second one. Okay, so yeah, the first question is how did you commute when you were at school? And we are talking about specific ages from 10 to 16 years old, because also these are the ages um, that will be now in the, experiments that we will present now. Okay, so here we have the different uh, options. Um, you have only one option here to choose. Like you can go uh, foot, public bus, um, in bike, car, train, metro, tram, and yeah, other wheel transport or others. Okay. Okay, I see that most of the people commuted on foot. Okay, a lot of people also in public bus. Okay, that's interesting. We see that not a lot of people commuted by car, which is quite good. Now, we will see now in the second question how um, people who have children take them to, to school nowadays. Okay, we we'll leave another. 20 seconds for everyone to join if you still haven't. Okay, so I think we have uh, a clear winner. Okay, we see not a lot of people cycling to school. We will also talk about this in the uh, experiment section. Okay, so I will um, go to the second question and see now um, people who have children or who had children as well. Um, yeah, I see that a lot of people already responded. Okay. Uh, most of the participants this is not applicable but we see that yeah this is good because also we will see now that in the last decades the there has been a significant change in how uh, people commute to school not only to school but also to university or to work but yeah okay but we see that some people cycling as well okay i will go now to the last um question this uh, a bit more specific also yeah to go um, get more into this webinar so it's if you could implement one innovative solution to improve school mobility in your area what would it be okay so feel free to to write some inputs here mm -hmm. okay see walkability 
<risa> ok. Bike lanes. Yeah. Some of them related to infrastructure, I see. Yeah, I think it's this one is a really important. Car free zones. This we're going to see also in one of the experiments. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have many possible solutions uh, related to to limiting the the car access, pedestrianized streets. Okay, yeah, and also behavior change. This is a very interesting one because we are going to uh, discuss more about this in this webinar. Okay. Yeah, I see a lot of interesting inputs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, the, the cycle lanes. Okay, good, good. I see a lot of already interesting answers here. And now, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we will dive more into Uh, the webinar so okay i will stop sharing and give the floor again to reggie one moment please thanks for that javier and i think that was quite interesting to see particularly how cycling is maybe increased um from one generation to the next it's a very unscientific poll but certainly you know, it was quite frowned upon to cycle when i was at, at school and uh, now i think it's a little bit more in vogue Um, so Javier has now kindly brought the presentation back up on screen. Uh, next slide, please. And we'll now, in the process of handing over, is it working? Yeah. Now in the process of handing over to hear more about the substance of the project now and the sustainable mobility stream in particular. Um, so I'll hand over to my colleague Lucas from uh, TU Vienna. Great, thank you very much. Hello, everyone, um, and also welcome from my side. Thank you for ICLE for organizing it. Um, my name is Lucas. Uh, like um, um, it was said, and I'm uh, together with my colleague Nadine Hauf from TU Vienna, um, also uh, mainly involved in the research lead in the stream, and I'm now presenting on the aims and structure. Uh, of our stream in this context. And Rigi has already said some uh, general words on the Shared Green Deal project and a little more detail here. Um, the overall aim of the Shared Green Deal project was to simulate action on the uh, six EU Green Deal policy areas. And we take a dedicated social sciences and humanities approach uh, to focusing on tangible local and regional change. And one particular Uh, aspect of the SSH perspective here is the overall focus on the meso level and middle range changes, which we situate between uh, the individual level on the one hand and the macro level on societal organization on the other hand. So we've really focused on behavioral, social and cultural change in this middle level. And that is the common starting point uh, for all our streams in the project. Next slide, please. So uh, with this in mind, uh, the Shared Green Deal project uh, realized a total of 24 experiments uh, in these six streams here. Um, we have a clean energy stream, circular economy stream, efficiency renovation stream, sustainable mobility, that's ours, uh, sustainable food and preserving biodiversity. And in each of these uh, streams, there were four experiments uh, realized in various European countries. Next slide, please. Um, 
Now some words on our particular stream, uh, its aims and structure. Um, in line with the meso level focus in the mobility stream, we wanted to target uh, specifically institutionalized behavior and norms around the tr uh, travel to school in cities. And we therefore set up um, urban mobility labs in four different cities with each involving the participation of three schools. Um, and we understand these mobility labs as an opportunity to create or to co-create knowledge and intervention within schools and particularly together with young children uh, in the age group 10 to 16, um, for which we try to have them represented as much as possible in all our um, local experiments. And so in total, most of the participants uh, had actually been young people um, together in a mixed group with other adult stakeholders like teachers, parents, um, representatives of poli police, municipal experts and so forth. Uh, and now the outcomes that we envisioned for these experiments uh, were set in two dimensions. On the one hand, uh, we focus on the creation of context specific solutions, such as for instance, games, exhibitions, awareness campaigns, mappings and uh, actually anything small, practical and physical, but in a way tangible, uh, um, which aim generally at raising awareness and acceptance for the topic of sustainable mobility. And on the other hand, um, this was the development of local policy recommendation as an outcome. And this was also imagined as a way to represent young people in policymaking and planning processes a bit more. Next slide, please. So finally, these here are our locations for the experiments that we could select out of a total of, I think, 30 plus um, applications. And in these four cities, we have had the chance to work with wonderful partners, uh, an NGO in Galway, an NGO in Panevigis, which we're putting a flashlight on in a second, uh, a nonprofit organization in Sofia, and a municipality in Braga in Portugal. Um, and we'll hear more about the, the, the different projects uh, later. Um, next slide, please. So now some, some words on the organization and our uh, framing that we provided for uh, the duration of the local experiments. Um, for the individual mobility labs, we planned a total of eight forums that are, yeah, semi-public events uh, which involved a fixed set group of, of participants over the course of one year and um, these were organized in three broad phases firstly starting with the co-identification phase in which uh, the focus was on identifying problems and needs in the school context then uh, secondly a co-selection and preparation phase in which the context specific solutions and first ideas four policy recommendations were brought together. And then lastly, the co-development and co-implementation phase in which the solutions were realized uh, and finalized and in which also the process was more open to the public uh, in, in public last public events. And you can see here that today we are right behind uh, the, the scheduled end in February, um, so a month ago. And so all discussions and insights that we hear about today are totally fresh um, and yeah. So can please go to the next slide. Um, so lastly, apart from this practice aspect of all the, the local um, urban mobility labs, this project also has of course a, a reflexive aspect, um, a research aspect and with the process, uh, the development process and outcomes of the streams, we want to discuss the overall research questions of how can local mobility experiments in schools initiate the development of institutional future mobility strategies to accelerate the shift to sustainable and smart mobility. And uh, to answer these questions, uh, this question we have formulated a sub, uh, yeah, more sub questions uh, that go more into detail on um, yeah, influences that contribute in success and failure uh, and um, yeah, the general working of the mobility experiments, the role of technologies and material and also uh, the representation of young people.
And to answer these research questions more in detail, we were collecting data throughout the whole um, implementation processes, uh, collecting monthly notes and summaries of the project. And most importantly, after the implementation phase, uh, each of our local partners is conducting 10 interviews, uh, six interviews with children and four with adults. So also the representation of young people in this process. And we are going into the evaluation of these uh, interviews throughout the year. So first results we're expecting basically, um, yeah, at the end of this year, or early next year, probably. Um, so that was a quick run through uh, our projects or uh, local streams, uh, aims and structure. And with this, I can already hand over back to my colleague, Elian. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lucas. And indeed, Elian is up next and she's going to explain a bit more about the, the local experiments that you referred to. Welcome, Elian. Thanks, Reggie. Uh, next slide, please. Welcome everyone from my side as well. So as Lucas mentioned briefly, um, the, uh, we had four experiments in which I will provide you more information about the experiments in Sofia, Bulgaria, in Braga, Portugal, and Galway in Ireland. And the fourth experiment will be presented by Lina in the deep dive session. Next slide, please. The first experiment took place in Bulgaria, Sofia, and it tackled ma mainly mobility challenges related to the need to improve their air quality and also other uh, challenges related to the fact that the bike infrastructure and public transport, they remain very limited in Sofia. And also the current model splits um, rely a lot on cars, so the high motorization rate rate. Therefore, parents, they rely mainly on cars to bring the children to the schools. And also the old mobility habits and facility that doesn't uh, support a shift to a more sustainable model split. Therefore, the aim of the experiment in Sofia was to explore with children and other stakeholders a potential shift to more uh, sustainable mobility habits and also how to improve their quality and also better safety con conditions uh, for the kids. As main outcomes in the experiment, um, it was reported the increased awareness of children and youth on the topic of sustainable mobility in schools. For example, uh, children and youth, they reported that after the experiments, now they have been paying more attention when they walk around the streets, on the infrastructure and environment. And also they reported that um, pedestrian infrastructure in better conditions and also more safe would encourage them to walk more. Another uh, innovative local solution were the post boxes that children built in the schools. You can see the picture on the bottom left in which they built the post boxes and also they were encouraged to write stories about sustainable mobility and share this with the, the school as a mean of dialogue and for their voices to be heard and ideas as well. Other solutions were policy recommendations, which they, they built policy recommendations covering five spheres, which includes environment, infrastructure, culture, behavior, organizational and safety. Uh, and another interesting solution was a map that they are building to express the conditions of walking routes around the schools. And the idea is to share this uh, with the local authorities. Next slide, please. Yeah, here you can see some pictures of the experiment. Um, the experiment in Sofia held a total of eight forums um, and a total of 50 participants. Other than the students, there was also the participation of teachers, parents, NGOs, and uh, other partners. Next slide, please. Here you can see the main three schools. Um, I, and they were located in different areas, in the outer city center, outskirts, but also in the city center. And uh, the age of the, 
the children range from 7 to 19 years old and in the third school, 7 to 14. Uh, our local partner there was Sofia Development Association. Next slide, please. And the second experiment was uh, took place in Braga in Portugal. They also focused on the mobility challenge uh, related to the, the use of the car uh, and mainly in the city center areas in which uh, the car competes with uh, the space for from other road users and also from other uses um, of the other mobility modes. Therefore, um, the aim of the experiment here was to reduce the number of vehicles uh, in the school areas and also uh, encourage other modes, for example, school buses or cycling and also the use of the paddy bus. As main outcomes in Braga, uh, one of the interesting results were uh, the periscopes that children built. Uh, you can see also a picture on the bottom left. Uh, periscopes, they considered that children, they do not experience streets like us adults. Therefore, uh, children built the periscope, which is a cardboard and mirror device that helps adults to walk around the street and experience the street from the child height and eyes. Uh, other um, outcomes also were suggested measures, uh, for example, increasing the number of, of guardians using public transport, reducing parking spaces in front of this, the school, also uh, building crosswalk in the entrance, uh, paintings in the asphalt as a calm traffic uh, solution, and suggesting car-free days. Next, please. Uh, here you can see some pictures of the workshops and forums with the children as well. Uh, the experiment also included children, youth, parents, teachers, and stakeholders involved in mobility. Next, please. Uh, the experiment included mainly three schools, uh, one with youth from age to 15 to 18 years old, and other two from 10 to 14 years old. Um, and our partner was uh, Braga Municipality. Next, next, please. And the third experiment uh, took place in Galway, in Ireland. Uh, the mobility challenge, uh, they are related to the fact that the use of cycling declined a lot, a lot in the last decades. And also they identified uh, a significant gender imbalance among boys and girls that use cycling. Um, other challenges are safe school zones they, that they are created just in primary schools, weather conditions that requ require better parking facilities, and also the fear of traffic. Therefore, the aim of the experiment in Galway was to discuss the gender difference in young ch children, why does it happen, and what, uh, which interventions could help to address this inequality, and also identify levers and policy recommendations to take action. Um, main outcomes uh, in Galway were events like walkability audit, and also three events with pop-up stalls with the students. Also a big survey with more than 350 students participating and providing their ideas and insights on sustainable mobility and local solutions to, to address how can we increase the girls' interest in active mobility, encourage they, them to cycle and also to feel, to feel more safe in cycling. Next, please. Yeah, so you can see here also some pictures of the experiment. Uh, this is the serving which uh, youth could provide many ideas and insights uh, on the topic of sustainable mobility. Next, please. And the main two schools that took place um, in, in Galway, you have their name here. Students, they had an age from 12 to 18 years old. And one school, they were just uh, for girls. 
um, our, our local partner in Galway was Unmine and Rotar, an NGO that has been promoting cycling uh, in the last years in, in the city. Next, please. Now I will hand over to Reggie. Thank Thanks, Elian. Uh, that was really interesting. And uh, again, if you have any burning thoughts that you've been scribbling down, do put them in the Q&A uh, for discussion after this next slot. Um, but without further ado, we'll go more deeply into one of the uh, case studies uh, from Lithuania. And uh, I'd like to welcome Lena to provide a presentation. Yes, thank you very much, and hello everyone. Can't hear you quite yet, Lena. Uh, sorry, okay. I'm. I have a, a mute button operating somewhere. Uh, oh, sorry, that's my mistake. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah. So, hello everyone. Again, my name is Lena. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to present our case, our social experiment that, that we had in Lithuania. And first of all, I would like uh, to say some words about our organization, because as I see here in this room, no more from Lithuania. So probably, probably I have to introduce a little bit myself and my organization. And uh, our organization, Environmental Center for Administration and Technology, uh, short name abbreviation is ECAT, and we are operating since 1997 and uh, supporting Lithuanian municipalities in implementing different environments environmental uh, requirements and working on different environmental topics. So sustainable uh, mobility is just one of our uh, field areas where we love to work. And uh, we are situated at Kaunas, but our experiment and our partner in this experiment was in Panevejis municipality. Next slide, please. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to introduce location where we had our experiment and uh, just a few words about Panevejis municipality. Panevejis is the fifth largest city in Lithuania and it's known for its green and pleasant environment, but also faces some problems and environmental problems such as air pollution and uh, high noise levels due to its industrial significance. And uh, the city has set goals to combat climate change and develop a sustainable urban mobility plan in 2017. Now it has to be renewed, uh, updated, uh, but this process is foreseen for next probably year. Uh, however, school mobility remains problematic, and as you see from the slide, uh, only not only, but uh, 59% of children being brought to school by cars, and in contrast, only 18% use public transport, 20% work, and 3% cycle. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now I would like to introduce schools which participated in our experiment. So we had three different pro gymnasium, they different in size. You can see from 285 students in Berju pro gymnasium to 569 students in Ajalo pro gymnasium. They, all of them, they situated in different corners of Panevigi city and uh, uh, the three schools participating in the experiment also demonstrate varying degrees of sustainable transport usage, raising from 87% walking in Berju Pro Gymnasium to 50% of students being brought by car. This is an Ajolo Pro Gymnasium. And I would like to admit that currently the city's strategic documents lack emphasis on actively involving schools in implementing sustainable mobility concepts. And Panevejia's sustainable urban mobility plan only includes two measures uh, related to promoting sustainable mobility in schools. One measure is providing affordable public transport tickets for students, and the second one is establishing special public transport routes for school transportation. 
Next slide, please. Uh, when we were writing project application, main challenges, what we saw is the reduction of uh, traffic congestion nearby the schools, engagement of young people in the social experiment, and change of attitudes and mobility habits, not only of school children, but their parents as well. And a key challenge was to effectively engage and motivate children to express their opinions and ideas on shaping the city's sustainable mobility. Our goals, <clears throat> they were different, but the overall objective of our experiment is to increase the number of sustainable uh, journeys and improve the safety and health aspects of school mobility. And of course, additionally, we have different goals to that. Uh, what we wanted, we wanted the experiment to expand the knowledge based on climate change actions within the municipality and um, of course enable uh, uh, the voices of young people to contribute to the development of local policy recommendations. And uh, what we planned to do, we planned to prepare three school travel plans, uh, develop guidelines for preparation of school travel plans, and we thought that this will be helpful uh, for the schools uh, when our experiment will end, uh, uh, develop policy, prepare, develop policy recommendations, and uh, we were thinking that it would be nice to prepare something very practical just to ask uh, school children already practice the sustainable mobility uh, habits. So I will tell a little bit later, but we developed a very nice school uh, mobility game. Uh, next slide, please. When we started to implement uh, our social experiment, uh, the main challenges for us were stakeholder involvement. Another thing is that sustainable mobility is the not most popular and well-known topic uh, in Lithuania. Therefore, we get uh, to be really creative, enthusiastic, uh, and uh, um, just to try to organize all process and, and tr try to be efficient um, with this our process. And of course we had different age children, teachers and municipal officials. And the uh, biggest headache for us was how they will communicate in cooperation sessions, how we will make these cooperation sessions effective and how we will succeed to get everybody's attention to the process. But we had uh, drivers, and uh, these drivers, uh, it was our experience, uh, as I mentioned before, already introducing our organization. We have an experience working with different budget groups. We have experts in our uh, team working with different topics and uh, good knowledge of sustainable mobility. This is also our driver and advantage. And uh, what we succeeded to get, uh, Already from the beginning, we succeeded to get support from educational department in the municipality, which supported the idea and uh, which helped to involve uh, Panerogi schools to the social experiment. And also we were lucky to have interest and willingness of the participating schools to implement the experiment. Uh, next slide, please. Now about the uh, implementation process. As it was mentioned before, all three, all four experiments, they were structured the same way. So we had eight uh, forums. Uh, we created mobility lab and we had uh, nice eight events where school children from three different schools, their teachers, parents and external stakeholders participated and these are our events they were organized um, 
in different ways. Uh, as Lucas already explained, we had some discussions on problems. We had uh, some sessions on looking for uh, different um, uh, different methods and different possibilities. Uh, what we can do, how we have to plan that uh, the sustainable mobility idea would pro be promoted, that uh, real good uh, plans would be created, and we had some time for preparation of policy recommendations. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, as you see from this slide, uh, kids were not only sitting uh, in uh, the classrooms uh, and participating in the state discussions, but uh, they had all, also some practical tasks and homeworks, what they had to do. They had uh, to investigate the uh, mobility situation around their schools. They had to investigate most popular and common roads to the schools. And they also had to map the problems on the road and together with teachers and their parents to analyze the situation later on. Next slide, please. Uh, we also had uh, separate meetings for adults, where we also discussed about mobility situation in Panevergis, where we uh, looked at the problems, uh, at the current situation. Uh, we had different stakeholders from municipality, from Panevergis uh, Health uh, Center. And one of advantages what we succeeded uh, to do in this project, uh, when the project started, we succeeded to organize a meeting with high officials in Panevergis municipality, and we got their support for implementation of this project that was very, very useful in further uh, our stages. Next slide, please. Uh, what kind of methods we have used? We have used different uh, engagement methods. Uh, as I mentioned already, study tours in the school surroundings, investigation and analysis of the situation, participatory meetings, workshops with different stakeholders where we had interesting discussions about current mobility situation in Panevergis municipality. Next slide, please. What were the main outcomes of our uh, social experiments? So first of all, we created three uh, sustainable mobility, school mobility plans for three different schools. We also prepared recommendations how these plans should be developed. And uh, we prepared policy recommendations where ideas and suggestions from children uh, were included. And it was made as a nice publication and during in our final forum it was uh, given to uh, high officials from Panevergis municipality on the bottom of this slide you can see our product uh, one product which we developed uh, also within our social experiment this is a game which we practice to play with uh, children during european mobility uh, week and uh, this game <clears throat> we are very proud of the uh, of this game uh, what we created it's called let's grow a sustainable mobility tree together and shortly for each sustainable trip children received small dot and stick it to the tree and the more sustainable journeys the more beautiful the tree blooms and this game was very very uh, 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 liked very much by by all schools and they played it uh, during uh, European Sustainable Mobility Week, but they also are going to play this uh, in springtime and what was said by schools, uh, they will play it uh, in the coming years also. And next slide, please. Uh, shortly about uh, changes of uh, 
uh, our social experiment after our social experiment. So what I have to admit that increased knowledge and understanding of sustainable travel in schools will lead to more focus on sustainable mobility. Uh, also practical exercises, what uh, I described a little bit, routes to school research and sustainable mobility game have already changed the travel habits of some of teachers and pupils. Uh, also, we started dialogue uh, um, between municipal administration and schools, and this um, dialogue showed a real willingness uh, of schools to change their travel habits, and perhaps the first contact will strengthen and encourage cooperation between the municipality and the schools in this area. And also, uh, I'm very happy that pupils enthusiastically shared their minds, their ideas, experiences in our final event. And it was really, really great because they spread this message of, uh, among other schools, among municipal officials. And I believe that uh, because this came from school children, these ideas, so they will be evaluated and taken into account uh, in organizing sustainable mobility in Panevezhi's city. So I believe that this was my last slide and thank you all for attention. Thanks very much for that, Lena. That was a really excellent insight into, uh, you know, seeing the detail of the activities that you've been undertaking. And I'm sure that has already answered quite a few questions that people might have had in their heads about how we ran the project. However, uh, we do now have time for, for some questions. So uh, I'd invite you, as I explained earlier, to use the Q&A function to submit some questions. We've already had a couple of questions in and a couple of questions that came to us directly. So I'll hand over to my colleague, Aliane, who can uh, pose those to the relevant uh, participants. Thanks, Reggie. Yeah, so I will read, uh, I'll start with one of the questions from the Q&A. And um, it's about impact. So what impact, we, we didn't still talk about this, uh, given the time limit, but um, one of the questions is what impact evaluation tools have you, you used to measure effectiveness of your experiment? And I think it also relates to, yeah, one of the questions that I was about to ask, uh, like impacts and also project continuation. Um, I would suggest maybe Lucas or Ivan, if you could comment a little bit on this topic, which is very interesting as well. Yeah, sure. Um, I think we're going to discuss the, the topic of impact in our next session with Ivan a bit more. Um, but just uh, a, a clear answer to this would be there is, we didn't have any quantitative impact measures because we didn't set any quantitative um, aims exactly for the uh, experiments and I think that's a bit in the nature of the experiments that we want to really um, co-create the not only um, the, the results but also the whole process so the, the process was very much open for development for which setting fixed uh, impact measures at the beginning would have been a bit contrary yeah, counterintuitive uh, maybe to, to the experiment logic. Nevertheless, we're of course um, evaluating and yeah, how, how um, this, how we could see change in behavior, but this is something that we're going to assess probably mainly through the uh, data that we've collected through the, throughout the implementation phase in the um, monthly reports, um, but mainly in doing the or in the interviews with the participants and seeing how their attitudes have changed so it, it will be more like an, a qualitative evaluation of the process and the effects of change we see then uh, a, a quantitative uh, yeah evaluation i hope that answers the question yeah thanks um uh, we also got another question that's uh, related to the presentation from Lina um, about how the cross working across the three schools worked in Lithuania 
and all the case studies and what you found that worked well in the experiment? Yes. Uh, so from what to start, because we had really nice process of working together, of creation sessions, and uh, we discussed with uh, schools, with uh, teachers, that it worked very well, actually, and uh, it was very sufficient to have um, uh, pu uh, pupils from different schools in one team together with uh, experts from municipality, from other different institutions, uh, and to give them this possibility to be together, to discuss the topic, to look for problems, to look for solutions. And uh, I think that uh, methods would be used uh, help them uh, to, to hang this discussion and to go through all the process. And at the beginning, uh, it was uh, somehow uh, hard uh, to start the dialogue because uh, people from different schools, they just saw each other for the first time. They were probably shy and afraid to uh, express their ideas, opinions, and so on, uh, because uh, uh, because municipal experts, uh, they were in the same room, they were together. But after several cases, uh, several um, meetings, uh, several forums, uh, everything somehow went very flu fluently. And, and uh, I think that we had really nice experience and uh, past through this process uh, successfully. But of course, there are a lot of things that you can uh, think about for the future forums and try to make them much more better and have improvements of that. But in principle, we succeeded to achieve the results what we planned from the beginning. Thanks, Lina. Uh, we also got another question, uh, and it's from also uh, our partners that were running the experiment in Sofia. They are interested in knowing how did you measure the modal split of transportation in each school you presented it? So how did you got this data? Did you use surveys or other tools? Yeah. Yes, thank you for question for Bulgarian colleagues. Uh, this data were provided by schools. Uh, they made it uh, before, before our experiment. Uh, I do not have any data now. We are planning to do that a little bit uh, later, probably at the end of school year. This, but uh, they had this uh, survey of what how to say just very simple they asked people which modes they are using traveling when traveling to school so students just raised their hands and waited for one another mode and we got this data yeah we have also another question about a shift on on the behavior so the question is for how long a shift of behavior might have last or should have less to name it a uh, behavior change. So we had some discussions about it. Uh, I also think it comes to the impact that we were talking and also to one of the previous questions we had is like, how can those kind of experiments with limited scope, time and budget to bring a change, uh, for example, to behavior, but also to the meso level of the experiments. Um, so uh, maybe Lucas, would you like to to comment on, on this? Yeah, sure. I think uh, the last question is really uh, at the heart of uh, the aim of this experiment uh, is to foster long-term change. Um, by institutionalizing some of the, the, this this kind of behavior. And um, I think the most relevant aspect here is that um, we wanted to have 
initiate long-term change through processes that are repeated in schools and things like uh, installing a common kind of a com in school internal communication system with the mailboxes or uh, fostering the practice of making school travel plans. These are the things that we hope will create long-term change really. So not only the, the process of the experiment itself creating a behavioral change, but with the experiment really creating uh, institutional strategies to foster this, this change. Um, so ideally, of course, uh, the shift of behavior should should be yeah stabilized and uh, last way beyond the project. But of course, a project with only this duration of one year can only initiate some some of these institutional strategies. I think. And maybe if there's time also to the question of Chris from ARU. Um, yeah, yeah, I was checking if we, yeah, we have this is, time. This is yeah. just maybe from, from our um, experience in, uh, so Nadine and I from TU Vienna have mainly worked uh, together with uh, ECAT in Lithuania and SDA in uh, Sofia as like our main um, project partners. And uh, in our communication, we took a lot of time, uh, especially in the in the early uh, meetings uh, with the both institutions, uh, to discuss some yeah some other practical examples from other um, co-creation projects and experiments that uh, in, yeah work with children, involve children, and we try to yeah bring in some inspirations and ideas from this. But it, I think it was very clear at the beginning that with the main focus on children we really need to develop some formats that uh, are tangible that uh, involve a lot of practice and interactivity and this is also a main outcome that we see in this experiment how important actually this uh, these process had been in yeah, making the experiment successful um, yeah so this was in a way that designed in in previous, but we didn't um, foresee any specific formats that need to be realized. So we only suggested a number of tools and uh, ways ways to do this. Thanks very much for that, Eliane, and for the great questions that have come in. I see there's one or two hands up now. We're just going to have a short presentation, and then we'll take verbal questions after that, if, if, if that's okay. Um, next slide, please. So I think this is all setting us up for this discussion about delivering real change, isn't it? Is what's gonna last long-term and what can we actually prove um, in terms of its effect. So our research support partner, Ivan from MRI is now gonna uh, introduce a, a discussion around this point. So over to you, Ivan. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> it would be so nice to sit around a large table and uh, and and try to talk about everything what we what we tried to do and what impact uh, we could achieve. Next slide, please. Uh, in this uh, experiment, uh, we uh, really brought up some interesting uh, tools how to how to make uh, children parents, teachers, and also the municipality interested in this topic. And you can see, I just collected a few uh, interesting gadgets, the periscope, which shows with ch children's eye the problems, the survey, uh, which was prepared in Galway, the mobility game that your tree is becoming nicer if you come more times in a sustainable way to the school and the post boxes in which children can really put their ideas and the teachers and others open the post box, post box and look uh, what 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 really uh, happened in this uh, uh, in uh, what, what are their 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 suggestions so uh, uh, these are interesting uh, approaches and my first question would be and you can raise your hand or you can write it into the chat that do you have any other ideas which are just uh, coming onto the table, uh, which uh, really uh, like, a, like a stone into the water shows that something can be done, something has to be done, and some uh, interesting ideas, gadgets, or, uh, or, uh, or uh, uh, 
new approaches which could uh, steer up the 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 situation in your school so if you have any any ideas uh, either linked to these ones or or some others then it is now the time uh, time to tell it now or or to write it into the chat uh, a related issue could be that uh, can you re replicate these uh, uh, these uh, approaches into your school can you uh, did you get the idea that you will uh, that you will build these uh, post boxes, or uh, or you will uh, uh, you, you you will prepare periscopes or or some other uh, other uh, 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 things? So how easy it is uh, to replicate? Uh, I see one hand, uh, so maybe we can give the uh, uh, the word to to Mario. Oh, I was uh, expecting to speak in the end, but that's fine. I can do it now. That's good. Um, I'm based in Portugal, in Lisbon, so uh, I can see there is a strong presence from Braga and Torres Vedra and, and other Portuguese. Um, in terms of uh, um, keeping the behavior change, which is what we want, and not only during the experiment, we have been uh, working in a project in Portugal. Ever is doing quite a lot of... Uh, schools or with that project which is the traffic snake game and what we do is we make a questionnaire before during the experiment and then three weeks afterwards and that's a way and what we've been finding out is that in fact you know there is a little bit of a uh, you know the relaxing in terms of behavior of modal change but uh Indeed, there are results. And the traffic snake game is quite easy. It's a little bit of a gamification for children. Now they collect stickers uh, if they come walking or cycling or by public transport. And then they put uh, the stickers in a very big banner in school. And that's, uh, that's a very uh, effective way to gamify. And what we say is that we bring the idea of modal shift and sustainable mobility for the dinner time conversation so that children can speak with parents why they are collecting stickers and to force parents to uh, to get them a sticker so that they put a sticker proudly in the in the snake so it's like a big snake and there are prizes along the snake until we get to the head of the snake and then we get a big prize uh, the other project that we've been doing in Lisbon uh, and we introduced to the Lisbon municipality is very easy and that's very good to accompany and monitoring along the years, which is called ANZAP. It's inspired in the uh, Scottish project and it's very easy. So you have like an online questionnaire and then you ask uh, schools in your municipality or city uh, to put ANZAP uh, in a questionnaire that takes only five minutes for each class to do. So basically we can have a portrait every year or every two years or every three years, what is the model shift and what is the results of this project that uh, we are being doing. If there is indeed some behavior change that is staying after this experiment. And, uh, but anyway, if you want to contact uh, us, uh, we have a lot of ideas. We've been working with schools for more than a decade and that's uh, you know for a continuation. It would be good to stop. Thank you, Mario. I think these are these are very interesting uh, ideas how to replicate uh, and how to make effect uh, uh, in the schools. And uh, the earlier uh, questions which were which were raised uh, were uh, directed to the problem: How can we really achieve an impact with these issues? And here the impact uh, 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 means that through the children, we have to influence the parents, we have to influence the teachers, but probably we should also influence the municipality because the municipality has the transport department. The transport department has a lot of uh, uh, rights and responsibilities and potentials to make uh, real changes, for example, to calm down the street in front of the schools, to introduce uh, uh, regulations during uh, heavy school times, uh, what kind of uh, vehicles can go in and what not. So uh, uh, these are uh, uh, 
it can include school mobility into the sustainable uh, urban mobility plans, which most cities have, but probably they do not address uh, especially the school uh, topics. So a second round of question is, uh, do you have any experiences uh, in your city and probably not the cities, the 12 cities uh, or uh, uh, which we have dealt with, where you really achieved a change, uh, uh, a long-lasting change in your in your in your city, of which you can be proud of, where you really achieved uh, the closure of a street or uh, or some radical improvement in uh, in less parking space in front of the school, etc. So, uh, any ideas uh, how 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 you can achieve lasting changes by the parents and by the uh, uh, by the meso level institutions. I am waiting now for a second whether any any ideas are coming in. Do you uh, hear for me? This. Yeah. Hello, um, I am Gonzalo from uh, Diputación de Granada, uh, Granada Energy Office in, in in the southeast of Spain. Uh, I already put some some links in the in the chat. Uh, there are different. Uh, um, measures that we implemented in our schools, but I I wanted to to share with you uh, uh, the one of uh, safe uh, safe school routes uh, that we are implementing at a provincial level, and it's really interesting uh, because we um, go to the schools and we do like a first session in which we tell them the 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 problem with the the air quality in the uh, nearby the, the schools and and the and the mobility problem. And then we involve the municipality and we do different uh, workshops with the parents and the, and the children uh, to see how they go to the school and um, to start um, organizing a, a school policy for, for mobility in which the parents and the municipality uh, get involved. And uh, it's us usually successful when the municipality uh, is involved because uh, the policemen, the local policemen go to the school. They see the problem about the parking lot uh, when the, the children go out and, and from the school. Uh, and they uh, tell the, the children and the parents uh, all the, the traffic problems. And they participate in uh, designing in the municipality the measures uh, of uh, that are going to be implemented not only to put some specific routes in which the the children can go uh, by bike or, or walking, uh, but as well uh, on redesigning the, the urban space in the municipality. So the space is better, uh, the, the signaling is, is, is bet better placed and, and the, the urban space uh, can be more safe. Uh, they do some soft measures like uh, painting the, the streets or uh, Putting some uh, some um, plants to give more security for the children, and in the within the workshops when they work in the workshops, uh, sometimes they find uh, I always tell everybody that uh, in one of the workshops we were we were speaking with uh, one of the children, and uh, uh, one of the activities was to calculate the time you get uh, from from your house to the school, and this children was going with his mother in the car. And he got uh, 15 minutes by car. And walking, uh, he got 10 minutes. So less than with the car. And it was because uh, the, the mother uh, before uh, got the, the small, smaller children to another place and then got uh, these other children, which uh, was uh, older, to, to the school. So we find some, some behavioral aspects that uh, once they do the workshop, they um, they pay attention to these very small aspects and then they realize ah why why I, I i am older i can go walking and i don't have to go with my mother and, and my um, other um, brother to to the other school before and i can do it uh, walking uh, without uh, having the car and there are other um, other things that we learn in these workshops but are quite successful um, usually and that's that's all i i put the the link's already in the chat, and there is much more information there than what I uh, already told you. Uh, do you do you make this kind of workshops in uh, in small cities and also in larger cities? And do you see any 
difference how to achieve a change in a small place uh, compared to a larger larger city mm, yes and uh, and no <laughs> we are a provincial government so we work uh, uh, as you said um, both at rural level and urban level we have granada city um, which is uh, over 200,000 inhabitants and then we have uh, municipalities with 300 inhabitants in in a very rural area um, it depends, of course, the, the situation changes, uh, the traffic uh, issue is more important for, for the people in the urban areas and the climatic and or cleaner near the schools issue is more important in, in other areas. But um, it, it, in the end, it doesn't change that much. It, it is more related to the involvement uh, of the policymakers of the municipality. This is the main point that... Um, helps us to, to really achieve good results or, or not. If the municipality is not involved, we are speaking with the parents and the children, they implement some of the measures, but they don't find a safe, a real real safe route in, in their municipality. So they get scared and some of, of them decide not to go walking or, or by bike. So the, the involvement of the municipality in these workshops and, and being able to redesign the urban spaces is, is really important. Okay, I mean uh, this is a very good uh, way to go through the uh, through the last question because uh, 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 school mobility is one aspect of mobility in our urban urban environments, and obviously mobility I think is a much more difficult issue in larger places where you have uh, where you have really congestion and. Uh, and and uh, and difficulties. So through the school mobility, you can you could also influence the mobility as such in your city. But sometimes you are not successful. Sometimes uh, the municipality doesn't listen to you. Uh, uh, you don't, you go, you cannot break through uh, the, the, this, uh, these barriers. And my last question is, do you know any examples about guerrilla beh behavior? Because uh, we have some guerrilla interventions in public spaces where, where people put flowers without being uh, asked or, or, or allowed for that. Do you think that uh, in uh, around the schools, uh, with the best will to improve the school mobility issues, some guerrilla interventions would be necessary do you know any examples of that where you, where you, for example, you block some parking spaces uh, to make the children's access to school better? Uh, so can we break through the mobility barriers uh, in, in, in any way, not just going through the official line and waiting for years that something happened, but in a, in a, in a, in a different way? Do you have any examples or, 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 or thoughts about that? Yes, but I, I, I'm not sure if I understood well the, the, the answer, the, the question, but um, I think, yes, um, um, we do not only work on the on the way uh, uh, that the children go to the school, but as well the, the traffic issues that uh, we have in all, even in, in this 300 inhabitant uh, rural municipality, we have a traffic jam near the, the, the school at the peak hour because all parents want to take their, their children with, with their cars. And uh, we uh, um, uh, collaborate with the municipality to implement, um, to take off parking lots uh, nearby the, the school and uh, even close the, school, the, the street near the school in order to change the traffic uh, around the, the, the school. And uh, uh, even uh, we um, work with the local policeman to uh, control better because even with, with this, with not uh, parking lots and uh, blocking the street, there is some and civic people that they, even with these measures go inside and near the, the school with their children. So uh, we need uh, the collaboration of the local uh, police to uh, to be successful in the implementation of this measure. And uh, this way we um, we as well uh, promote the change of, of behavior and mobility of the parents, uh, not only the, the children, uh, because they we put uh, more difficult uh, uh, the way to 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 arrive the the schools with the with the cars, and of course we give them information in these workshops about uh, the problems of traffic jam, the air quality, the, the the children are more 
uh, vulnerable uh, at um, pollution uh, and all these aspects. I, I don't know if I understood you uh, well or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the idea behind our experiment is that uh, that uh, uh, everyone loves their, their, their the children. So through the children, we can also affect the much more difficult issue of mobility because people also love their cars, and they uh, uh, they many people are just unwilling to give up their their their, their cars. And uh, and uh, uh, through through these experiments, uh, I have also I have already heard about uh, many from the schools that some parents really understood the issue and they gave up to bring their kids by car. So we already experimented some behavior change directly in the in the experiment in the experiment. So uh, I was just thinking about that maybe uh, we can go next time a bit further and we can we can try to uh, uh, to use these people who already changed their behavior and the kids who are now convinced and also the teachers who are now convinced that what steps could be done uh, to really to find different measures how to convince uh, the the meso level again the municipality the police the traffic regulation those people who make decisions that these decisions uh, should be taken and uh, should be uh, uh, should be implemented as soon as possible okay now i understood I... you you better um, we achieve of course uh, this change of behavior uh, on different children and parents and teachers uh, but at meso level it's it's very difficult to measure it and uh, and to follow the the, the the further changes of on mobility of the people, um, it's uh, it's one step that we achieve, and I think uh, for sure uh, even with children that they are going to be the future uh, people in the municipality. We already achieved something, but um, it's difficult to un to answer you and tell you at meso level what is the. It's one of of, of uh, the different measures that we are implementing. We are implementing other things at public uh, transport, uh, bike lanes, etc. But uh, we, we I, 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 I couldn't tell you at what level we are achieving mm -hmm. to, to get to the meso level. Okay, uh, just the just last sentence and then I give back the word uh, to Eliana, <laughs> uh, that also in this uh, school mobility issue, the temporary solutions can be useful. So uh, uh, we know a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, ideas when you, uh, for example, if you if you make a super block in Barcelona, then first you make it in a temporary way, and then after one or two years you make it final, uh, or or you change it if there are many many uh, uh, suggestions how to how to make it uh, better. So we can also use this idea to find out temporary interventions of the different schools and look how how these uh, interventions work. And then make them final after after we receive the feedback. So uh, thank you very much. This was an attempt to have some uh, interactivity, and now I give back the word to Reggie or Eliana. Thanks, thanks very much for that, Ivan. I think that was a really good attempt to to keep people awake at the end of quite a long webinar. So that was fantastic. Um, we'll now start drawing things to a close, and we talked a lot about sustaining behavior of children in going to school, but we're now going to talk about sustaining the behavior of ourselves in continuing to think about these issues. So next slide, please. Uh, and one more slide. I'd like to invite my colleague Valeria to talk about how the Shared Green Deal project will continue and how I think you may be able to be involved. So Valeria, over to you. Thank you very much and hello everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Valeria Fantini. I work in ALDA, European Association for Local Democracy. Uh, and in the project Share Green Deal, we are in charge of building a network. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, as the colleague was anticipating, um, the idea is that uh, in the upcoming coming years, Share Green Deal will create this network uh, made up by individuals and organizations that uh, are, who are interested uh, in the use of uh, um, social sciences and humanities research to support EU Green Deal ambitions. Um, among which, uh, among these ambitions, there is also, of course, sustainable mobility. So this is very important also uh, for you who are attending today's webinar. 
um, what is the ob objective of the network? What are we going to do with it? Uh, so the network mainly uh, will uh, run event and uh, also disseminate tools uh, and resources to build the capacity of the network members uh, for, again, um, uh, organizing and for implementing um, in their territories these social innovative practices uh, and activities to uh, meet uh, climate change goals. Uh, so, for example, uh, just to give you again an idea, for the people who will be part of this network, um, what I mean, if you are going to be part, if, if you are an organization, a local authority, a person who is going to be part of this network, uh, you will be first able to connect with a, a group of diverse European stakeholders. Um, you will be able to have tools, to access tools, again, to implement on your territory these uh, um, socially innovative actions uh, and activities. And if uh, you are, for example, coming from the research sector, so if you are a researcher, you will also be able to access uh, relevant uh, insights and information for uh, from uh, social sciences and humanities research. Uh, so why are we sharing this with you right now? Because we would like you to involve you from the beginning. So right now we are in the, uh, let's say, embryonal phase of the network, meaning that at the moment within the project, we are still defining exactly the uh, main objectives and the strategy to build this network. Uh, and we would like to involve you if you are interested in this brainstorming, meaning that again, uh, as we want to build a network that is really tailored to your needs and expectations uh, if you want to be part of it in the future. Uh, and we would like to hear your feedback. So um, for this reason, we would like to, to invite you to uh, scan this QR code. And uh, after the end of this webinar, please share your insights. It, will, it won't take you more than 10 minutes maximum. Um, but please again share your insights and what you would like to see and what would you like and what would you expect from this network. Uh, you will receive the link also via email, but again, I invite you to um, be active part of it. And thank you very much for giving me the time. Thank you very much, Valeria. And uh, that's great. I'd encourage everyone to get involved in that. But otherwise, um, we finished in time for you to have a lunch break and in, hopefully enjoy the sunshine where you are today. We'd like to thank all the speakers, all the you as participants and all the schools and the participants in the experiments that have allowed us to uh, communicate this information today. There's four more webinars and other subjects coming up. If you visit sharedgreendeal.eu or find us on our social media channels, you can also find out others that you might be interested in attending. But otherwise, I wish you a good day and thanks for joining us. <laughs>